When it comes to vegetables, there's nothing like fresh corn on the cob. But when that's not available, corn is also great right out of the can. And anyone with an appetite for feats of engineering will appreciate the whirlwind journey from cob to can. Throughout man's history, food preserving has included smoking, freezing, drying, and salting. In the early 19th century, Nicholas Alpert built a factory to preserve foods in hermetically sealed glass jars and to sterilize them by boiling. But glass was breakable, and so in 1810, an Englishman named Duran invented the tin can, first used by the military. And soldiers, it seems, first developed the handy can opener. The corn that's canned is harvested from mid-August until mid-October. Canning is done very quickly. Less than four hours pass between harvesting and canning procedures, so as to conserve much of the nutritional value of the product to be sold. The unloading of many trucks of this size will be needed for the 150,000 tons of corn that are canned here annually. The cobs are transported into the plant on this conveyor. They will first have to pass through a kernel remover. Equipped with several counter-rotating cylinders, this unit removes the leaves and the silk that surround the cob. With only a few seconds, the cob is completely stripped of its covering. Once cleaned, the cob falls into this chute en route to the next processing step. Here, they're lined up, ready to be handled by the kernel remover. The kernels are removed from the cobs by going through the machine, where knives remove the kernels in a fraction of a second. Each of these units remove 1.5 tons of kernels per hour. Twice a day, the machines are stopped to inspect the blades, to clean and sharpen them. The corn kernels fall into the middle, while the cobs themselves are moved to the sides. Both kernels and cobs move along on their separate ways in the process. The kernels are entered into this rotating drum, which removes any particles larger than the kernels. Nothing is wasted in the processing. Corn residues, leaves and cobs will be all used later as animal feed. Now the kernels fall into a mix composed of water and of a fluid that's obtained when cutting the corn kernels. This liquid mix allows for the transporting of the kernels without damaging them. Next, the kernels flow along this belt and are placed on this conveyor toward the following processing step. Bleaching is done in this huge cylinder. A worm screw brings the bleached kernels to the surface. A visual inspection verifies the quality of the kernels. All that remains is to pack them into these leak-proof cans. Thousands of cans of every size are carried to the filling department. Filling the cans is done from this rotating filling machine. This filling machine can handle three to 450 cans a minute. The kernels that fall to the side are gathered up later in this cylinder and returned to the filling line. Here, a brine solution composed of water, salt, and sugar is added. Covers are securely attached onto the containers, but the canning is not yet finished because they have to proceed with some very important tests. They perform tests in this laboratory that assure the quality of the product. First, they check the water tightness of the cans. They also control the filling weight and the quality of the kernels. Meanwhile, cans continue winding their way through the plant. One step remains, sterilization. Sterilization takes place in this oven at 250 degrees 
and lasts between four to six minutes. This is a crucial step because it guarantees that the product is reliable and that it will remain so for 18 months. Now they taste samples of the product to determine that it conforms to quality standards. Cans are labeled as customers orders are filled. In this facility, they produce an amazing total of 43 million cans of corn.